college track and field has never been more competitive than it is right now. Because at the NCAA championships, at every division, some of the best performances in the world will go down on that weekend. It shouldn't be hard to believe, because Julian Alfred never lost a 100 meter race during her collegiate season, and then went on to make the world championship final in the 100 and finished fifth. And that race was a disappointment because she beat the woman who became the world champion just a few weeks before. And let me tell you, that race wasn't even close. Thanks to athletes like Christian Coleman, the collegiate record in some events would have been the world record 30 years ago. And if you ask athletes like Ashton Eaton, you don't even have to wait till college is over to break a world record. The reason the track is so competitive now is because getting a scholarship to run in college is much harder now than it has ever been at any point in history. If you're hoping to get one, please know I've got your back. As a former NCAA head coach, former Division I athlete, and someone who now helps student athletes get recruited to compete in college, I should know a thing or two about who gets money and why. So here is the truth about what every college coach is really looking for. Something that not every athlete is willing to do. And it is the reason why more track athletes quit in college than perhaps any other sport, cause they're flat out not willing to do it. So let's get down to business, cause I don't know how to say this without calling it like it is. In the eyes of a college coach, there are only two types of athletes that they are looking to recruit. It is true for every sport, but track and field has something going for it that no other sport does. We use a clock or a measuring tape to assess your performance every time you go out there to compete. That means that you can't hide when you are alone out there on the track. It is just you versus everyone else. So it makes things very clear for a track coach to see what they want to in recruiting. Or so you would think. Coaches want to know if you can help their team win. And if they don't think you can, there's really no point in continuing any recruiting conversations. So the only two types of athletes that they actually want on their team are the following. Either A, you are that good at the events that you do. So good in fact, that you can help their team win right now. Or you are an athlete who actually wants to win that badly. I mean badly enough where you are willing to do whatever you have to do in training to put yourself in a position to help the team win. And here is the secret that nobody ever wants to tell you. Almost no athlete is actually that good in the first place. So that means almost all of the scholarships go to athletes who really are the second one. Just take a moment and think about it. Aria Knighton and Noah Lyles are actually that good, but they didn't go to college in the first place. And Sha'Carri Richardson went to college, but she won the national championship as a freshman the only year she was there. But America has 50 states and only one state champion in each. In states like Florida and Texas, where they've got a lot of talent, they've also got a lot of programs that take track and field seriously. They're not all gonna get the state champion in recruiting. When coaches move down the leaderboards and continue to recruit, they need to figure out very quickly who's real and who's not. Kendall Williams was the world junior champion in the 100 meter dash out of the state of Florida as a high school runner. But even an athlete as great as him didn't win any individual SEC conference championships in division one until his senior year of college. And if I'm gonna keep being honest, the real problem that college coaches keep running into in recruiting is that most high school recruits don't really wanna be good at the college level, at least not badly enough. They just want to look good rather than actually being good. And I'm not talking about the color of your spikes or even whether or not you rock a headband. What I'm saying is that they're more concerned perhaps with being the best runner on their high school team or maybe even their county, than considering what's actually happening throughout all of the levels of the NCAA. Even the Division III 100 meter champion ran 10.13 seconds. He doesn't get a scholarship to do it. The truth without Photoshop, as the head coach in Division II, I didn't really care that much if you were the fastest runner on your high school team. When I was out recruiting, 
I did find a bunch of kids who actually were, but the best athlete that I ever signed was actually the fifth best runner on his high school team, a team that had won two back-to-back -back state championships. He knew how good he was not, at least not yet. So he worked harder than everyone else, even when he was technically more talented than most of his teammates. Remember, not every college coach is only recruiting state champions. Yes, some have a budget big enough to go internationally and get some of the top athletes. But people like me didn't have it like that. I was looking for recruits with the potential to get better and had the drive to actually pull it off. I would even tell them all the same speech over the phone in recruiting. I would simply tell them, I'm recruiting you in the first place because I believe you can help my team win. My success is your success. It's really not about you though. It's about me because I want to win. That means I have to coach you every single day with the goal of winning championships in mind. And if you don't want to be on a team where I'm going to push you that hard, don't come here. Go find somewhere else to run. I was hoping to weed out the athletes who would eventually quit the team. And for the most part, that speech actually worked. But you still don't have to believe me because the evidence is all around us. Even the most talented of track recruits are not going to make it at the college level if they really don't want it that badly. Tamar McCallum was the fastest high school sprinter in the 100 meter dash in 2022. And then he signed with Tennessee in the SEC conference where he didn't qualify for a conference championship final in any individual event as a freshman. If that can happen to the best, what do you think is gonna happen to the rest of the recruits? He might dominate the NCAA someday, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work before that day actually comes. A day when he runs faster than he ever ran when he was in high school to do it. Melissa Jefferson, on the other hand, was nowhere near one of the fastest girls when she came out of high school. But now she's an NCAA champion and a USA champion. She did all that at Coastal Carolina University because she found a coach who believed in her and her potential and her work ethic just as much as she did. Please don't get me wrong. Most high school athletes like winning and getting accolades, but they tend to do it at the expense of actually seeing what their potential is. Answer this question. Would you rather win a meet but run far below your personal best or actually run a PR? but be far away from winning on that day. If you answered with option two, then you might actually be what college coaches are looking for, because that is most likely gonna be your experience when you get to the college level. That's the real reason why some recruits go on to quit, because they can't handle losing, sometimes a lot of the time, but that's on the path to eventually getting the victory. The only way you can work towards it is if you don't give up along the way. And college coaches, actually know this. They want athletes who can handle the grind. It is that, along with your talent, that gets a college coach to believe in you. And besides, the coaches really aren't recruiting the athlete you were in high school anyway. They are recruiting the athlete you will become when you're wearing their uniform. So if you really want to get recruited and get scholarship money to compete, all you really have to do is focus your energy on actually being good. In other words, you just have to want it that badly. Then find a coach who believes in you as much as you do, regardless of the name of their school, because a bunch of NCAA champions like Melissa Jefferson are proof of that. I'm Coach Rob, and I'm always here to help you get recruited for college track and field. And if you want to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe.